So this is going to be the homework for tonight, limiting and excess reactants. For number one, we see that we're talking about assembling a race car. And the whole notion of assembling a race car is this is the parts list that you have. And this is what a perfect race car is. So based off of a perfect race car, we can answer number one. And once we answer number one, we'll be able to figure out from that the rest, because all it's asking for is ratios and whether or not you understand the ratio of a perfect car. So those are the answers for the questions one, two, and three. For the second page, those are the answers and the drawings that are necessary to complete it. This should be the third page for the homework packet. I have the table written out. For number nine, however, there's a little bit of a confusion with this term oodles. Now that's just a term meaning a certain amount. It's the same thing as saying four dozen or four moles. So it's just a term. Now what matters is that the term oodles is being used in all of the terms. So we don't have to worry about what an oodle is. All we're worried about is the ratio. So we have the equation for a car which is one body, three cylinders, four tires, and one engine. So let's go through the bodies. If we have four oodles, and we're assuming that we have plenty of everything else, we should be able to make a total of four cars. If we have five cylinders, it takes three cylinders for a car. So that means we would only be able to make one oodle of a car. And this is four oodles of cars. If we have eight engines, then that, and we're assuming everything else is in plenty, we should be able to make eight oodles of cars. And if we have eight tires, we should be able to make two oodles of cars. So assuming the inventory in their warehouse below, how many race cars would the Zippy car company be able to build? So if we have this many oodles of things, we see that one of these is limiting how much cars we can produce and that would be the cylinders because we only have five oodles in total we only should be able to make one oodle of car because that's going to limit the production for 9b I just answered that in the previous question it's, it's just a ratio and because it stays the same it doesn't matter and for 10 no because what matters is it depends on what's limiting not necessarily the smallest number of parts so that's the next page with the model 3 we have the molecules drawn in the chemical products we have a total of six of those with some leftover H2's and those are the answers for the page and those are going to be the answers for the next page. So on the next page for number 15, A, do both calculations give the same answer to the problem? The two calculations that we're actually looking at are these two and this and this. So the answer is no. You get 8 moles of H2O from two moles from eight moles of H2 and you get 12 moles H2O from six moles of O2. For the B, which one was used most for question 13? It should be equal because the limiting was different. So for the first two what was limiting was O2 and for the last two what was limiting was the H2. For 16A we're going to see that we need to first write a reaction of the entire reaction itself, a balanced one. Based off of that we're gonna know the for every statement for this reaction. We're starting with 10 grams of H2 and 5 grams of O2. So it's similar to those oodles and that whole notion. 
So let's see which, how much water we get when we're starting with 10 grams of H2 and how much water we get when we start with 5 grams of O2. And the logic should be that the limiting reactant is the one that produces the lesser amount of H2O. So if we're starting with 10 grams of H2, this would be 10. So we're multiplying by 2.5. And this over here with the H2 would be multiplied by 2.5 and that would be 90 grams. So if H2, 90 grams of water is what it would produce. Now if you were to start with 5 grams of O2, we would find that the conversion factor is a division by 6.4. If we divide this by 6.4, we should get 5.62 grams. So if you start with 5 grams of O2, you get 5.62 grams of water. So what you notice is that oxygen is the limiting because it's producing far fewer oodles of H2O than the 10 grams of hydrogen. So next part, part B, what mass of water can be produced? We're going to figure out what the mass of water is based off of the limiting. So we know that oxygen is the limiting. So that means we should use this number because this is how much water is produced based off of what we know about oxygen. So we just answered B in reasoning and figuring out which is the limiting reactant. And then for C, which reactant is present in excess? So because O2 is the limiting, that means that it is completely consumed, leaving some extra H2. So we have to figure out how much H2 reacted with the O2. We would know how many grams of H2 reacted, once again going back to our for every statement. We just figured out from this, starting with 5 grams of O2, we had to c divide by a factor of 6.4 and we found out how much H2O was made. If we do the same thing, dividing by 6.4, we're going to find how much O2 reacts with H2 and how much H2 is reacted with O2. And what you should find from that is 0 0.625 grams. This is the amount of H2 that reacts with O2. But if you look at letter C, it's asking how much remains, not how much reacts. So you started with 10 grams minus the amount that is reacting, and you should get somewhere around 9.3 something or another grams. So that's how much excess you have in this reaction. So you have an excess of H2, and the O2 reacts completely, and that's how much H2 is left over.